ADATA XPG V2 memory kits are optimized for the latest Intel gaming platforms. Check the link in the video description for more details. Welcome to our RAID setup guide. This one is sponsored by ADATA, so they actually provided us with some SSDs to show off the setup procedure for RAID arrays on an Intel chipset motherboard. So in this case, we're using the Maxima 6 Extreme from ASUS, and we're gonna walk you through everything from start to finish. Although very briefly, the types of RAID that are generally supported by a motherboard are gonna be RAID 0, which is better for speed, but actually worse than single drive operation for reliability. RAID 1, which doesn't do anything to speed, but is much better for reliability, but costs more per capacity because you're doubling up the number of drives you need for a given amount of storage. And RAID five, which I generally don't really recommend running off of an onboard RAID controller because the performance isn't great and migrating from one motherboard to another one can be a bit of an issue in terms of, um, well, the data staying, you know, there. All right, so the first step is to press delete or F2 or F11 or whatever it happens to be on your motherboard to get into the BIOS. You can see we already have this set up so because we were cheating and we made sure we knew how to set up a RAID array before we started filming this. Uh, what you're gonna wanna do is get into the SATA. It's usually under chipset or something like that. So SATA configuration. Sometimes there will be multiple SATA chipsets on your motherboard. You can consult the manual or they're often labeled physically, but you wanna make sure all the drives that you wanna run in RAID RAID are connected to the same physical controller and I'd usually recommend using the Intel one unless there's a compelling reason not to or on an AMD motherboard the AMD one obviously. So the SATA mode selection there's usually IDE, HCI and RAID so that should be pretty self-explanatory. Go with RAID then F10 to commit our changes and restart the computer. Now when you boot up, you're gonna see an additional option that you didn't have before if you weren't in RAID mode. And it's gonna say, press Control I to enter the configuration owl at her utility. So from here, you can create RAID volumes, delete RAID volumes. Please note, when you delete a RAID volume, you do wipe out all the data on those drives. So be very careful with that. In fact, when you create a RAID volume, you wipe out all the data on those drives. You can reset disks to non-RAID, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we are going to show you creating a RAID volume. So in our case, we're gonna call it OS because the only reason I can think of to build a very high performance, massive RAID zero would be for an OS that you're not planning to store anything critical on and you're gonna do like nightly or even hourly backups because that is a very, very scary way to run your computer. I would know because I do it and I've had quite a few problems with that. So you go down through these options. When you select the drives, you use spacebar to select the ones you want to use. And it'll actually only give you the RAID options that make sense for how many drives that you have selected. So RAID 5 won't show up until you select at least three drives, and RAID 10 won't show up unless you select at least four drives. When you're done, press enter, and it gives you an option for strip size. So generally speaking, smaller strip sizes, that is to say how much data is written to each of the however many drives are in the RAID 0 before moving on to the next one. Smaller strip sizes are generally better for random, and larger strip sizes are generally better for sequential performance. However, your mileage may vary and it depends a lot on the kind of drives you're running and the kind of data you're working with. So we're just gonna go with the default option, which I believe was 32, although it doesn't matter. We're not gonna use this for anything. Capacity, you can adjust the capacity you want. We're gonna go with the full capacity of our drives, which is in there automatically. Create volume, all data will be lost. Yes, we're okay with that. Once this is done, all we have to do is press escape to exit and we're ready to install our operating system. On ASUS motherboards, we can press F8 to bring up the entire boot menu without actually manually reconfiguring our boot devices. There you go, uh, just keep mashing it. On other boards it's different, I believe it's F11 on Gigabyte boards for example. So now all we have to do is go to our Emation clip, which is our Windows OS, so you would use your disk drive if you had a Windows disk in the optical drive for example. But in our case it's a bootable USB, so we're gonna load this up and show you the last step here. So it should show up as unallocated space. If for whatever reason your array does not show up here, what you're gonna wanna do is click Load Driver and then you're going to insert either a USB drive, make sure you plug it into a USB 2 port, not a USB 3 port because that'll need drivers in order to function as well. So you're gonna to wanna to throw it on a USB drive or on an optical disc, click browse, find the driver and install that. But in this case, we don't need it because we're just using the onboard Intel RAID. So we're gonna go ahead and just click next unless we particularly need to make a bunch of different partitions out of our drive. It does not improve performance in any meaningful way, contrary to what you might have been told in 1998. Um, so there you go. 
We're gonna go ahead and do that. Okay, one thing you can do is you can short stroke drives or you can leave extra spare area on SSDs. But you don't wanna just create a bunch of random partitions for no reason unless you really, really, absolutely you're need to do okay we're done now so basically there you go guys that is how to set up a raid array whether it's raid zero which is what we did or raid one or raid five or whatever else the case may be running off of an intel raid controller built into your motherboard thanks for watching don't forget to subscribe like this video if you liked it dislike it if you disliked it and comment on it if you had some feelings that just can't be expressed by doing this or this